Hello internet, I feel like it's been a while since I've done a video so I thought I'd do one. This is my third attempt at starting this video. I've gotten like a minute in each time. The first time I was interrupted by a stink bug, the second time my um, phone's kind of propped up against the window because of lighting and people are mowing their lawns so it got loud. So um, third time's a charm. Um, I've had a pretty miserable past seven days when it comes to reading. I have DNF'd three books, which is not something I do very lately. And I started listening to audiobooks, which I've loved. I've done, I started my third one today and I'm really enjoying it. First one I read was, um, listened to was amazing. The second one was awful. I just did not like the book at all. Third one I'm really enjoying. So I'm going to talk more about um, what I've read, what I haven't read, all of that um, for like a monthly wrap up. But Right now, I want to talk about some books I've recently added to my TBR because I have a TBR cart. It's right here. You can kind of see it behind me. And that's where I grab the books that I read from mostly because a lot of the books in my personal library, I have not read. And that's because I don't tend to hold on. In the past, I would not hold on to a lot of books after I finished reading them unless I like absolutely loved them. And I'm starting to change up that process now, but I'm not keeping like every book that I've read. But I'm definitely like unhauling books I didn't like or were kind of meh pretty quickly after I finished them. And then um, keeping books I really enjoyed, like to just live comfortably on my shelves. But as a result, most of my shelf, um, my shelves, there's multiple bookshelves, are books that I have not read. And so it's really overwhelming to kind of like go there and figure out what I want to read next. So I pick like a whole wide range of books that have just caught my interest and I, I shuffle through them quickly like I'll put books from the cart back on the shelf and everything but I try to only do that once a month. Um, I did it right when we moved so about a month ago and so I wanted to add some new books to my cart and so I have five six books here that I have I'm going to be putting on my cart and hopefully reading soon. The first one is um ironically called The One by John Mars. And this is a um, TV show on Netflix. It says coming soon right here, but it is now on Netflix. It's like a mini series. And basically it's a, um, you take a DNA test and you figure out who your soulmate is. So you're like matched with someone perfectly. And this causes like obviously a lot of chaos in the world because people find out they're not married to their soulmates or whatever. And so I thought it was really, it would be really interesting, especially because I'm getting married in October and I am so lucky I am marrying who I know is my soulmate. Um, I am my most authentic self. I became my most authentic self when I started dating him. We've been together almost four years. Um, my family loves him. I love his family. Everybody just gets along really well. And so then to like, to just the thought that like, I would then find out that he, this isn't the best person for me would I think definitely turn my my world on its head so I really want to read this but now that I'm like talking it through I'm like well maybe I don't that would make me sad so um and that's one of the reasons I didn't like the audiobook I finished yesterday was it made me just very uncomfortable in parts and that it takes a lot to make me uncomfortable honestly but that definitely made me uncomfortable but um maybe I'll read this one over the summer it might be interesting to read with my fiance um we've done that in the past we read Ender's Game in February together we that's one of his favorite books growing up I had never read it so it was fun to read and kind of discuss so maybe I'll um pitch that idea to him see what he thinks get him another get him a copy as well um or like the audiobook or something and do this together maybe I don't know I'll see next I have this book has been on my bookshelf for I don't even want to know how long um so it's time it needs to be read. It's a little intimidating because it's a little on the longer side. It's four, almost 500 pages and the print is quite small. But um, it's called Traveling to Infinity by Jane Hawking. And this is Stephen Hawking's first wife. This is her memoir. So um, this was what inspired the movie, The Theory of Everything, which I've seen it. There's a picture of um, Eddie Redmayne who played, I don't remember who played um, Jane, but Eddie Redmayne played Stephen Hawking. And I've been a fan of his since lateness. So anything that he was in, I was watching. And so Jane was with married Stephen when he got his ALS diagnoses and kind of watched him, um, his, his body 
kind of fall into this physical disrepair um, while mentally he was still all of the, all there. And so it's kind of her story because he did leave her for his nurse, I believe it was. And so I think it talks about all of that as well. Another book I have is Members Only by Samir Pandya. I really hope I pronounced that correctly. And this is about a man at a country club. Um, he makes a joke. He's in an interracial marriage. His wife is white. And he attempts to make a joke, but it is racist. And there's all of this fallout from it, um, basically, and how the community reacts to all of that. So I think the plot is fairly simple, fairly straightforward, but I'm excited because sometimes the simplest plots are the best. And I think it sounds really fascinating, definitely a lot to talk about. I pitched it to my one of my book clubs once and they said nope. Um, they wanted something lighter. I have two book clubs. One tends to go for the heavier books, which is one of the books I DNF'd. And then the other one go, tends to go for the lighter books, which is another book I DNF'd. So basically, both book club books this month were not hits with me at all. But um, the lighter book club said no. The heavier book club tends to plan their books about a month, a year out. So I think I'm just going to read this. Seems like a for some reason the cover has like a pool on it, so it's giving me like summer vibes. So we'll have to see. This is another. This is a light, fluffy book. I have two surprisingly, or one and a half, surprisingly light, fluffy books. This is called Sorry Not Sorry by Sophie Reynold. And um, so basically this is about a woman whose life, she's stuck in a rut. And um, basically it's like her trying to shake up her life, get out of her rut, find out new things, all of that. It sounds Nice, fluffy, easy to read book. Definitely like a summer read. I'll probably read this when we go on vacation over the summer. After that, I have An Un Unorthodox Match by Naomi Reagan. This is about a woman who's also looking to shake things up. She's a California girl named Lola. She has a business degree, fast track career, fiance, then everything falls apart. So she moves to New York and she wants to join an orthodox jewish sect like an ultra orthodox jewish jewish sect up in new york city and basically it's that romance and so this sounds like so different than anything that you would expect and so i'm really intrigued to read this my last book is a very controversial book i know it is controversial i just kind of want to come out and say that now that i know it's controversial but I I still want to read it. I want to see, I want to pass judgment for myself. Um, I, I know that a lot of people don't like the portrayal of certain groups in this book. I know that people don't like the fact that it's not an own voices book. Um, I do think that books don't have to be own voices books to be good. I tend to prefer them most definitely because they are the most authentic versions of a story. Um, and I can definitely understand where a lot of authors are white that you wouldn't want a story by a white author about another culture or another country to prevail. It does happen. Um, like I said, I do enjoy own voices. I have definitely gone out of my way, especially the past year or so, to make sure that I am owning and reading significantly more own voices, diverse authors, stuff like um, stuff like that. Just because, like I said, they're the truest, most authentic version of the story. Um, but I still want to give this book a shot. And I think knowing the controversy um, going into the book, will definitely help me digest it a little bit more. And so the book is American Dirt by Janine Cummins. And basically it is about a um, mom called named Lydia, who they live, she lives in Mexico with her son. And there are, there's a lot of gang violence and everything. So it's about them coming to America illegally. 
And so, like I said, there was a lot of controversy, controversy over the portrayal of Mexicans in this book and a lot of controversy over the fact that this was not written by a, um, by a Mexican author. And I think the fact that it was picked as an Oprah's book club book, I think that it, the fact that it kind of hit the ground running, people were expecting it to be in own voices and it wasn't. And had it not been such a prominent book, such a heavily publicized book as like, I mean, the, the, cover says the little blurb on the cover says a grapes of wrath for our times there's john grisham kristen hannah ann patchett and stephen king all have little blurbs on the back so this was a book that was like super 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 hyped and a lot of people were hyping it and then a lot of people were like well why aren't we hyping own voices authors and i definitely agree with that um but i, I want to kind of like see if i can remove some of the controversy read the book, see what the book is like on its own, and keep in mind that this is not written by somebody who has experienced these horrible events and had to make these difficult decisions that Lydia, yes, Lydia has to make in the book. So these are the books that I'm adding to my um, TBR cart. I have about 30 pages left in the book I'm reading right now, and then I think I'm going to do a reread of a book that I read ages ago. I did one reread already this month. I think I'm just gonna be like, you know what? Go for both of them, right? Go for both um, rereads right now. Call it a day. Um, the month isn't over for about 12 more days. I'm hoping I can get like three or more, three or so books squeezed into those 12 or so days. So fingers crossed, hopefully I'll read something better than the that I've read in the past week. So um, if you have any books that you've recently added to your TBR, make sure you comment down below. Make sure you like and subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye guys.